that San Antonio has been has an, a thriving industry predicated on internet connectivity. Lorenzo comes from Rackspace and was just sharing with me that San Antonio has more data centers, more hosting capability, more cloud-based, cloud-driven businesses than almost anywhere in the country. This is the home of some of the most sophisticated cybersecurity research and businesses in the country. All of these businesses will be strengthened by having Google Fiber in the community, we believe, but what's really interesting is while there is these big industries and businesses that have flourished based on <coughs> high bandwidth, high connectivity. What we really are excited about doing is extending that kind of connectivity all the way to people's homes and making it accessible to the small businesses and to the entrepreneurs and innovators in this economy. Google Fiber is a network that extends not just through the central part of town, but into your neighborhood. If you think about the highway system, that connects cities to each other, where, we're, where we travel at very high speeds. But as you get closer to home, you go, you get offloaded onto roads with lower speed limits. That's essentially how the internet works today, too. The internet, the backbone of the internet, connects cities and countries on fiber optic cable, where data moves at close to the speed of light. But the closer that the data gets to your home, it gets offloaded onto slower conductive material, copper or coaxial cable, and it slows down as it comes into your home. The reason the mayor mentioned this is a big construction project is because we are going to build over 4,000 new miles of outside plant, of fiber optic cable, extending that internet superhighway that superconductive material that transmits data at close to the speed of light, extending that network all the way to people's homes and small businesses. And what that enables is gigabit speeds. That's a, that's a term that might not mean anything to you, although I just met a nine-year-old who told me exactly what it means. <laughs> He's down there playing on his tablet right now. He and his little brother are so excited about having gigabit speeds at home. Let me. For the rest of you who might not intuitively understand how big a deal a gigabit speed is, let me try to describe it in a few different ways. All of you remember dial-up internet connectivity, right? You laugh because you think, oh, dial-up, that was awful, right? Everybody says that. When you had dial-up, you thought it was awesome. I thought it was awesome because it was awesome compared to what came before it. Because you know what came before dial-up internet service? The library <laughs> and the postal service. And with dial-up internet service, all of a sudden, you didn't have to mail a letter and wait two or three days for somebody to receive it. You could send an email and they would receive it instantly. You didn't have to go to the library to pull content. You could actually access that content online in real time. Those were revolutionary capabilities. They dramatically increased the productivity of the economy. They empowered people to do things that weren't possible before. That was just dial-up internet service, the internet service we all just laughed at a minute ago. Then we evolved from dial-up to broadband. And think about how the internet and the way you use it and the role that it plays in our society changed when the internet went from dial-up to broadband. All of a sudden, when you were on dial-up, you didn't say to yourself, wow, I really wish I could stream some video right now. Because you didn't think of the internet as a place for streaming video. Now it's hard to imagine the internet not being a place to stream video. It's one of the most common uses of it today. It's one of the things a lot of people think of as the purpose of the internet. And it wasn't possible on dial-up, but it became the norm when we had broadband. The evolution from dial-up to broadband was an acceleration in speed of the internet of about 10 megabits per second. The evolution from today's broadband speeds to gigabit speeds is an acceleration of the internet of over 900 megabits per second. That's a big, big step change. If you think about all the ways the internet changed between dial-up and broadband, and imagine how it might change when we're connected to a gig, it's pretty exciting to think about. It's also hard to imagine. What will we do that we don't do today? There, there don't exist a lot of applications 
that require a gigabit of speed because people mostly don't have a gigabit of speed. So if you had a bunch of gigabit dependent applications on the internet today, you would think this is a really bad application, it doesn't work. Imagine trying to use YouTube with back when you had dial-up. But you couldn't have imagined that back when you had dial-up because you didn't think of the internet having that much capacity and having that potential to be used in that way. It won't be until we have gigabit speed that the innovators here at Geekdom and throughout San Antonio have the opportunity to really imagine and start developing the killer applications of a gigabit enabled economy. So in the short term, what we'll do with our gigabit speed is we'll be thrilled not to have to watch that little circle go around <laughs> while things buffer, right? We'll be excited that the friction of the daily pain of slow internet connectivity is gone. So I will point to my nine and six year old friends in the audience again and tell you a story about how slow internet connectivity impacts us daily by talking about my eight and six year old daughters. My eight and six year old daughters, unlike young Ramiro, don't actually know a whole lot about what a Wi-Fi router is. But one day I came home and I found them sitting in a corner of the house playing on their tablet, sitting in a corner that no one ever sits in our, in our house. It's kind of a dark corner, it's got an ugly chair there. But I come home and my kids are sitting on that chair playing on their tablet. You know why there's an ugly chair in that corner? To cover the Wi-Fi router. You know why my kids were sitting in that chair? Because that's the spot in the house where the internet is most responsive. They didn't know that. They just had found through trial and error that that was the best place in the house to use the internet. That's how much we almost unconsciously crave a speedier, more responsive internet. And the short-term effect of having Google Fiber will be you get that satisfaction of an immediate response on the internet. The long-term potential is what's really exciting because when a critical mass of people in San Antonio and in the other cities where we're working are connected to a gig, that's when the entrepreneurs here get to really see what's possible and develop those next generation applications of the internet. And San Antonio will be on the cutting edge of this. And I know that this is the right city to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, the mayor mentioned that uh, it doesn't happen overnight. So let me talk a little bit about the next steps, and then I'll turn the podium back to Lorenzo. Um, let me start by saying, I spent my whole life taking infrastructure for granted. I would flip a switch and lights come on. I would turn a faucet and water would come out. And I never thought twice about it. But these things are actually amazing. They are the miracle of the modern municipality. And they are, they are amenities that not everyone in the world can take for granted the way we tend to. Now, having spent the past two years deploying infrastructure in Austin, I have a profound appreciation for the complexity of operating that infrastructure and installing that infrastructure. Google Fiber will be adding to the infrastructure of San Antonio a fiber optic network of over 4,000 linear miles that, when it's complete, will enable San Antonians to access data at gigas gigabit speeds. But for the next two years, for the next few years, we will be deploying this network, and it is a, it is a major construction project. That's one of the reasons that we've spent so much time do in the due diligence phase working with the city, working with the San Antonio water system and my friend Robert Puente, working with CPS and Doyle Benaby and his team, because it will require a partnership so that we can deploy this network in as efficient a way as possible to deliver service to people as quickly as we can, but also to do so in a way that minimizes disruption to the community, because while construction is always impactful, we want to do it in a way that is as responsible as we can. So that's the next step. We have been working on engineering and design for months. 
We will be proceeding in the net, within the next several months to the construction phase. You'll probably notice us. Uh, and as soon as we can, we will start delivering service to our first customers in San Antonio. I can't provide a specific date or timeline for that. Construction is subject to a lot of variables, not all of which are within our control, but we're highly motivated to work as quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, I should say, we, we will roll out the network in a staggered deployment. We will complete segments of the network and open signups in those areas as soon as we can, even while we're completing construction in the next neighborhood over. I know I will get the question a million times today, who gets it first? I will tell you right now, A, we don't know, and B, that's a decision we make based on network engineering considerations, based on where we can get the most work completed the most quickly. It will not be a, a contest. Uh, we're very excited to be here today, honored by the attendance of so many elected officials and leaders in the San Antonio community, and young Ramiro and Robbie.